Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing today? How is everyone doing today? This is Gregory Wiles coming live for you from Houston, Texas with his inspirational morning walk. Inspirational morning walk for the first time listeners. I get some exercise in the mornings and I just share my thoughts with you guys. Whatever I inspire to talk about that day while I'm walking, I will share that with you guys. A good way to start the day, get some exercise and I'll share my thoughts with you guys. So today it's a beautiful day in Houston, Texas. I know everyone is gearing up for the Christmas and all the decorations and the last minute shopping and all of that. That's just a beautiful time of the year. But I'll get my walking in today and I'll share something with you guys once again for first time listeners that is beyond on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 730 um, Central Time, that's the time here for us in Texas, but it's 8.30, that's on the Eastern Time for the people in the Eastern Time Zone, and you can calculate whichever time zone you are in, but I usually be on 30 Central, that's our time here in Texas, that's the good time for me to get some walking in to get my day started, and you can check out whatever you miss, um, we probably got just over 100 now. I think this might be 103, 104 of these videos on different topics all loaded up on the YouTube channel. Just check out Gregory Wilds or I usually forward the link to the YouTube um, throughout the day also. So anyhow, so today, today, all right, look like it corrects itself there. It's just getting a little bit of internet um, issues where the video had paused but um, it correct itself. So, all right, I'll stand in this position here where I think the signal is strong. Okay, so what I wanna talk about today, I wanna talk about the lying spirit today, the lying spirit. Last on um, what, today is Monday, I think on Friday, we talk about the, Renita, good morning, good morning, Renita. What we talk about on Friday, right? We talk about the complaining spirit on Friday, the complaining spirit. So I want to talk a little bit more about the lying spirit today, the lying spirit. I want to show you an example. We talk briefly mentioned stuff about it in some of the past um, talks that we did, but today I want to drill down and show you how it operates, how it operates. Because if we get this knowledge, man, if we understand this theory that Paul, good morning, Jillian, good morning, what Paul was trying to tell us, if we understand these two scriptures that Paul, uh, these two that I'm going to read, but he tried to warn us a lot. Life is going to be so much better for us. We can be less frustrated. We got a better understanding and would be able to succeed more in life. We wouldn't spend time complaining about things. We'll got a better understanding of why stuff happening and we can take care of it better. So the first one is Ephesians 6, 12. That's therefore we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Once again, Paul saying flesh and blood is not our problem. People is not our problem. And he gave the list of the hierarchy of the of the demonic kingdom here. The principalities is just like the highest in the kingdom that's just after Satan himself against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness. And this is how the the, the um this is how this the rank and file coming down, right? And then um he said that's who we wrestle against. Flesh and blood is not the problem, right? And then in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, he said, for we do not look at the troubles we can see now. This is the um, New Living Translation, right? So we do not look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen, right? So we got to fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. And this is why. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. And I'm going to explain what he means by that in our little talk today. So we're talking about the lying spirit today. We're talking about the lying spirit, right? And let's see how this operates, how this can come on you, how this operates and all the good stuff, right? So I'm going to take it from Kings 22, 1 Kings 22, it's 1 or 2 Kings 22, 17 through 23, 17 through 23 right this is when um king ahab you know king ahab the husband of the wicked queen jezebel right king ahab they wanted um josephat the next king of israel to go to war with him he wanted to go to war with him josephat said you know what i don't mind going to war with you we're all brothers you know we're all one family but um i want to hear from the lord 
if we should go to war or not. You see, these men back in those days, they were well in tune with the spiritual realm and they seek guidance from that unseen world. If God tell them, go to the war, you're going to win the war, go. If God say no, don't go, they don't go. Because they know the battle got to be won first in that unseen world. And then it manifests here. That's the real world. Once it's done in that world, then it manifests here, right? So Joseph had to understand that. Both of these men understand that. So Joseph had said, I want to hear about a man of God if we should go to this war or not, right? So Ahab was a wicked king. When we say wicked, the worship of the gods. is obia, his idol worship, his voodoo, all of that stuff, right? So he had his own prophets that, that, that seek the demonic world for his guidance, right? He had a 400 of them. So Joseph had said, you know, let's, let, let, let's, seek, let's seek the unseen world and see if we should go to this battle because I don't mind going. So he called his, his, his 400 prophets. But, and they said, you know what? Go to the war. The battle is yours. You're going to win the war. Go ahead. Proceed, you know. And, but Joseph had said, you know what? I, I know your prophets, but let, let's call, on, let's call on, a, on, a, on a prophet that hears from the God that I worship, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaiah, the God of Jacob. I want to hear from a man who hears from that God that bring us out of Egypt and have us here. So he said, man, there's one more guy named Micah, but this guy never prophesied nothing good against me, man. That's why I don't like listen to him. He never prophesied nothing good against me. But Joseph had said, anyhow, bring him anywhere. Bring him anywhere. Let's hear what he has to say about going to this war. So when he sent for Micah, Ahab sent for Micah, the man who was going to get Micah said, hey, Micah, these 400 men for the king, tell him he should go to the war. You should just make your word agree with theirs and don't come up with nothing against him. Micah said, okay, no problem. So when Micah got in front of him, Micah said, okay, you should go to the war and you'll be fine. Ahab got up and slapped him and said, how much time did I tell you? I need you to tell me the truth. Just don't tell me what I want to hear. And that is why I can pick it up from. Micah in 17, this is, uh, Micah said, okay, you want to hear what God really told me? This is what God really told me. And this is what Micah told him. Then Micah told him, in a vision, I saw all the Israel scatter on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, their master has been killed. Send them home. So Micah saying, this is the vision I'm getting. I see all the Israelites being scattered. And the Lord said their master has been killed. So in other words, if you go to this war, you're going to be die. You're going to die in this battle. And all your people are going to be just scattered. Right? So the Lord saying you shouldn't go to this battle. Because you're going to die. And hear what he said. This, this is King Ahab now telling Joseph. Did I tell didn't, didn't I tell you? The king of Israel exclaimed to Jehoshaphat, he never prophesies anything but trouble for me. So he's saying, that's why I tell you, I didn't want to bring this man and listen to him. He never, he never gave me any good prophecy. Was the reason why he wasn't giving you any good prophecy, right? Because no matter how wicked we are, and I did, and I did one of the sessions on this before, no matter how wicked we are, God does still have someone there to warn you to warn you and tell you the truth, but we dismiss it, right? Might be a family member, might be a good friend, might be somebody at the office. They don't care about hurting your feelings. They're going to tell you what is truth, right? You ask them what's your opinion and they're going to tell you the truth. Doesn't matter if it hurts your feelings or not. And you're like, man, she's so mean. But under your breath, you know, say, but she's mean, but you know, but she's right. But I have some yes people around you going to tell you what you want to hear, right? So God is still find a way to protect us and tell us the truth. So this is what he tell, right? Then I tell you this man never prophesied nothing good against me. And then this is 19 now. Then Micah continued, listen to what the Lord says. Micah telling him what he's seeing, what the Lord showing him in this vision, right? Then Micah continues, said, listen to what the Lord said. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne with all the armies of heaven around him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into into battle against Ramad Gilead so he can be killed. So the Lord, I just wish if you were to read different translation and get a better understanding, the Lord sitting on his throne and like they got all these angels around him in a living room or whatever, just relaxing and God saying, hey, who can, who can go and entice Ahab, this king, to go to this war? Because I want him to be killed in this war. He's wicked now. His sins has reached a point where I can't take it no more. And I'm going to destroy him in this war. So who can take care of this to me, right? So let's read it again. Then Micah said, listen to what the Lord said. I saw the Lord sitting in the throne with the armies of heaven around him 
on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramon Gilead so he can be killed? There were many suggestions, different um, translations said, they said this and they said that, but the, the guys say, man, you go, man, uh, we, we can do it this way. You know, I did a mission the last time, it's your mission now. You know, they just, this, a lot of suggestions were coming up in this discussion. I hear what happened in 21. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. Again, this is all in the unseen world, right? A spirit come up to God and said, God, you know what? I can do this. I can do it, right? And in 22, hear what God asks him. How will you do this? The Lord asks. What's your plan, bro? What's your plan, bro, for going and enticing Ahab to go to? What's your plan? How are you going to do this? And hear what the spirit replied. And the spirit replied, I will go and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. Remember all those 400 prophets already tell him to go to the war. They already give him approval to go to the war. And this is what uh, Micah is telling him how that come about. How that come about, right? Micah showing him. This is what happened. This is what the Lord showed me that happened, right? He said, I will go and entice him. Where am I? And the spirit replied, I'll go and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. And God said, you will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, this is, um, this is Micah telling him, so you see the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of all your prophets, for the Lord has pronounced your doom. So this is telling you there is something called a lying spirit, right? So when he listened to his prophets, right? And he found out they tell him a lie. Maybe if he had survived, if you read on the story, he did went to war and he did die just as Micah had prophesied, right? But the lying spirit went into the mouth of the prophet and tell him a lie. They probably was convinced that this their word and they was getting, but was a lie. So this is how the lying spirit operates. It entices you. He gives us a, a thing. I'm going to go and inspire you. So you see when people are lying and that's what Paul's saying. Don't set yourself on, don't set your eyes on the, tr the things you can see. Got a person in front of you might be lying and he said they might gone, they might move away, they might left the job. You might never see them again but you know what? You're going to encounter somebody else that's lying again. That's what Paul's saying because it's not about the person. That person was not your problem. It's the lying spirit. It's your problem, right? So you see how it is, is here. It gives us a preview of what goes on there, right? So he said, and the Lord put a lying spirit in the mouth of all your prophets, right? So when you see somebody is telling all these lies, and the thing is what frustrates you more, right? They tell all of these lies. And then when you confront them about the lies another day, they said they didn't say it. I never did say that. And the swearing that they never did say it. Because that person never did say it. They was under the influence, just like someone under the influence of alcohol. At the time when they're under the influence of alcohol, they do a lot of crazy stuff. And sometimes they don't even remember the next day what they did. And you got to be telling them, man, you know how you act yesterday? It's like, yeah, and you know, they don't remember, right? It's just like this. When they're under the influence of this lying spirit, they don't remember. That spirit is in control. Remember the example I give you on Friday with when I was in the airplane, right? They, they don't know. So they're going to tell these lies. And how this, how this could come through a generational course, or you could bring this on yourself. Because let's say you get into some trouble, and these, this, the, the lying spirits out there trying to entice you. Tell a lie. It says not you did it, man. You know how much trouble you're going to get in if you admit this? You know how much trouble you're going to get yourself into if you only admit this? Just say it's not I did it. That wasn't me. And, you know, you take the bait. If you're strong, you might say, no, what? No, I know how much more trouble I'm going to get into if I tell this lie. Let me just go right ahead and take this tr and, and just admit it and let it be done with. If I get punished, I get punished. But sometimes you're weak now when you give in and you say, you know what? I'm going to tell this little lie here right now. Just this one little lie to get out of this situation. And we know what happened, right? When you tell one lie, what happened? You got to tell 10, 15 other lies to cover up that one lie that you tell, right? And every time you keep doing that, you keep doing that, the spirit getting a hold of you, getting a hold of you, getting more control. It's just like the drugs. You take one little smoke, right? You take one little hit of the cocaine, the people who have was hooked on drugs or alcohol, and it feels good, and you're like, ah, oh, shoot. You know, I just take one more, man. Just take one more. And after the one more, and the one more, and the one more, and then you realize you're hooked, right? It's the same way. 
You tell this one lie, you gotta tell 10, 15 lies to, 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 to um, hold up the first lie that you told, and then it's getting good, and you realize, man, I get away with that, okay, it feel good, the next situation come up, first thing come to your mind, it's the lie, it's the lie about it, the lie about it, lie about it, and then the spirit finally, just like any addiction, get hold of you and get the control and you go on just telling lies. So guys, what I want to warn you, if you see your child, if you see the co-worker, the job, if you know somebody, they're telling lies and then after a while they get so, the, the, the spirit gets so much of control of them, they can tell lies for stuff they don't need to even tell lies for, stuff that don't even make sense. They can just, just telling lies, right? You come against the lying spirit and not that person. Because like Paul Ward was, Paul Ward was saying, the trouble that you see in front of you can soon be gone. But is the um, the on things of the unseen world last forever? He's saying, even if it's not that person lying to you, you might go and come to ten more people that lying. So what are you gonna do? Get frustrated? And we get frustrated, and we tell everybody out, oh, this person is a liar. Stay away from them. They lies, and you were telling everybody and complaining. Oh, this person in the office just lies. I'm telling you, if you continue with that attitude and don't get this understanding, you will be so frustrated, and that's the goal of that spirit to frustrate you to take you off your game but you gotta rise above it now and recognize don't look at the person don't look at Susie as the office don't look at Sharon that's lying you go and pray and come against and silence that lying spirit that's influenced them every time they're in your presence and demanded to tell the truth you got the power God said he give us power to trample over all evil forces and that lying spirit is an evil force and you can trample over it you see a child come home and they start picking up a little pot in a lion. You go into prayer right away and silence the power and come against the lion spirits that are trying to influence them. If it's a child young enough, God says, spirit or rather, spile the child. Yeah, you punish them, discipline them. But that discipline is trying to give them the strength to say no to the lion spirit. And you shutting down the power is weakening that force so you don't have that power to overcome them and they got the strength now i know mommy they don't in this you can discipline me and they got the strength to say no to the lying force but don't just discipline them without the prayer you need the prayer to silence the power of the lying spirit you see how it works here guys micah god give micah a little peek into the unseen world to show you how the lying spirits operate so I just want to leave that with you guys today. I want to shed some light on these things. When we go into the new year, we're going with more knowledge so we could have a successful year and our revelations can come true. Because without this knowledge, we can frustrate ourselves and we're going to do and repeating the same things that we're doing year after year. All right? So with this knowledge, now we're going to eventually get to fasting, but I need to shed the light on a lot of these things so you can be better prepared. So when you do fast, you can you can maintain the fast because after the fast this enemy is going to bring a lot of attacks to you because when you fast you 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 taking the fight to his door so i got to be careful before i get into you i want you to understand and be prepared for the attacks that come to you from the enemy from all angles so when you fast right so so understand this works guys Thank you guys for listening. I see a lot of thumbs up and hearts going up. I want to thank you guys. And we'll talk again on Wednesday. Right? Talk again on Wednesday. Have a great day.